Hey guys, Ash here from C4E Tech and finally after a long time they're going to be taking a look at a Huawei phone. This here is the Huawei P50 Pro and Huawei as you guys know has had certain issues with regards to being on the entity list and all that but this phone is supposedly extremely good with certain caveats but in this video let's go ahead and unbox it and see what is it that Huawei has to offer these days so this is the P50 Pro let's get started the first thing I notice when I see this is looks like they don't have a charger in the box you know it kind of resembles what Samsung Apple and even Xiaomi are doing these days it's pretty pretty slim so let's open up the box and this is the Huawei P50 Pro let's take it out that plastic Looks nice, they've got a glass back, of course glass to the front, the sides are metal, they don't have Gorilla Glass, they've got their own issues, like I said, uh, this back, these cameras, that's pretty much the start of the show here, they're calling this Dazzling Eyes, some people call it the stuff design, uh, it is what it is, these are supposed to be top spec cameras, we will get to that in a moment, for now let's set this aside, see what else is there, IMA stickers and, uh, well, pretty much... You've got a SIM tool, some booklets, oops, and we've got a case. So this is a soft case, pretty, pretty cheap, doesn't, I mean, run of the mill, nothing spectacular about it. So that's how it fits, seems nice. So now let's, let's actually set the box contents aside, turn on, turn this phone on and see what is it that Huawei has to offer. And as it boots up, let's quickly take a look around this phone. Uh, to the right, we've got the power key and the volume rockers. The top, we've got, it seems to be an air blaster, a secondary mic, a speaker. So this has a stereo speaker set up. Uh, the left is, well, left clean. To the bottom, we've got a SIM tray, primary mic, speaker, and the USB Type-C port. Now, using this Type-C port, you can charge at up to 66 watts, uh, though the charger is not included in the box. And it, this phone also supports wireless charging up to 50 watts proprietary of course so over here we've got a sim slot and the second side is in some variants it's an alternate sim slot uh, it's also a hybrid with a nano memory card so that's a, a, a standard that huawei has been supporting for a while so it's good to see that they've not kind of forgot, forgotten about it and it's still it, it's still an option so this is running on harmony os harmony os 2.0 that's pretty much the elephant in the room. We still don't have, have access to Google Play services. So that is definitely a big, huge bummer, uh, a, a deal breaker for a lot of people. Now, anyways, let's quickly get through this setup. Well, Huawei says they built this uh, OS from the ground up. They really haven't. It's still uh, pretty much open source uh, Android with certain parts customized by Huawei. Let's quickly run through setup. So here they are promoting their cloud, their app gallery, uh, whatever. They are forced to do this because there's no Google Play, right? Okay, fingerprint ID is still present under the display. Let me just set up a crappy pin. So fingerprint sensor is still present under the display. And there's face recognition, but this is just your regular camera facial recognition. Nothing special about it. Uh, so let's... We're done with that. So the display here is pretty beautiful. There's a lot of bloat has with most phones selling in China. So uh, there are a lot of things that you can and you probably have to uninstall. And of course, missing in action is Google Play services. So going into settings about phone. So this one is running on Harmony OS 2.0. It's got eight gigs of RAM. The chip inside, let's let's talk about that for a moment. This is the High Silicon Kirin 9000 chip. Uh, it seems to be a major improvement from the Kirin 990, but this time around, uh, Huawei is pulling a Samsung and they're just not launching a Kirin 9000 only. They're also launching a Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 variant. And the Kirin 9000 is supposed to be pretty much on par. So they aren't really compromising. Uh, and if anybody's interested in the Snapdragon 888, you could go for that. But again, again, the big problem here is not the fact that it doesn't have a, a Snapdragon chip. Or rather, Huawei phones don't have a Snapdragon chip. The Kirin chips have been working out great for them. The problem is they lack Google services. And that ain't going to get addressed here. Now, the resolution uh, with this display, it's... 
a kind of sort of different resolution it's 2700 by 1228 so it's kind of somewhere between full hd plus and quad hd plus uh the refresh is 120 hertz let's quickly go into display so that i can show you guys that we've got our dark mode options sleep options screen refresh rate there's a dynamic refresh which kind of switches between both you've got your high 120 hertz refresh and the standard uh nine i mean 60 there's no 90 hertz option so everything feels kind of really smooth over here with harmony os some things have been customized for example the notification panel you pull down from the left and you get access to that pull down from the right and you have active i mean you have access to the quick settings it's it's again pretty much a reskin of android at least that's how it comes across uh and it does feel uh, feel pretty uh smooth you've got your hms score uh, and hey there's an ads thingy you can disable personalized ads great spend 925 dollars on your phone and you still have to disable personalized ads despite not having google services awesome over with uh, anyways guys so that uh, what you've been seeing is pretty much okay let's let's quickly talk about this screen right so this is a 6.6 inch screen uh this phone weighs in at around 195 grams so it is lighter than its predecessor it does feel uh, pretty compact in hand despite despite that 6.6 inch screen 120 hertz refresh 300 hertz uh, touch sampling uh what else is there it's got a curved side so if you're looking at flat panels if that's something you like uh well you're gonna be disappointed uh, and i guess that's pretty much everything you've got to say about the display the big highlight like i said at the start of this video is this camera array to the back we've got a primary uh, i mean they're calling all these uh, true chroma cameras the primary is a 50 megapixel sensor f 1.8 uh, lens it's got optical stabilization your secondary is a true chroma uh, monochrome lens uh, uh, monochrome setup it's got a 40 megapixel sensor f 1.6 lens it's supposed to help with the pictures uh, and the third one is a 13 megapixel ultra wide f 2.2 so uh, let's quickly try a couple of pictures so let me let me let me actually pull this in so this is how the picture comes across again I've got my uh, tips over here and it looks pretty pretty detailed and we are not even looking at the zoom because there is a periscope zoom which is uh, what is present in this big huge module here and this and there are two sets of flashes that's weird or it's a color sensor or something any which ways I will update that in the description below uh, from a periscope zoom perspective we've got 3.5x uh and they market it as it can go all the way up to 200x at least on the website over here it's 100x but you know it's digital it doesn't really make a lot of sense you know uh at 100x you can barely make anything out it's all a blurry mess but uh let's say at something like 10x you still should get usable results so as you can see pretty usable uh this is 100x not really usable okay let's now take a look at some selfies okay you've got an option to select the mirror reflection okay we can go with that and let's also take a look at okay no beauty mode i really love how huawei gives the option they ask you right up front do you want the beauty mode or on or off so that's that's nice let me not have a beauty mode just take a shot of this mug and from effects we can hey the stage lighting i think the selfies are okay nothing nothing spectacular here uh it's a reasonably wide selfie camera so can't really complain decent so guys i'm gonna leave a couple of uh, samples on screen right now so that you guys uh, so that you can take a look at what kind of images, what kind of image quality you can expect from this because Huawei's flagships are all about those images, right? Now, from a software perspective, you've got your Pro Mode, you've got uh, a lot of extra options, AR lens, light painting, panorama, uh, dual view. From a, a, a video perspective, uh, Huawei has super slow motion, full HD, at up to 240 fps they also talk about 960 fps which is just inter interpolated not real 960 fps uh, the standard video can go up to 4k and 60 fps so that's pretty nice 
So this footage, the sample you're seeing was captured with the P50 Pro. So what do you guys think about the cameras on this? Your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. Now the chip inside, five nanometer Kirin uh, 9000 or Snapdragon 888, they've got uh, 3D graphene liquid cooling. So that is supposed to help out with the performance. Uh, from a RAM storage perspective, 8128, 8256, 8512, and 12512. Those are your options. 4360 milliamp hour battery on the inside. Uh, and again, apart from the fact that it lacks uh, Google Play services, it also lacks support for 5G. That's yet another issue that uh, Huawei is dealing with. So this is a 4G only phone. And at $925, that might be pushing it. So anyways, guys, that's a quick look at Huawei's latest P50 Pro, their flagship phone uh, for 2021. What do you think about this phone? What do you feel about Huawei's current status as a smartphone manufacturer? They've already spun off their honor as a separate entity to kind of, okay, no pun intended, get out, get out of that entity list issues. Uh, but I feel Huawei has been taking a major hit because come on, let's be realistic. The reason why Microsoft failed with Windows Phone is because Google decided not to support it. No first party apps, That's that was the nail in the coffin. Uh, and here, I guess it's pretty much the same with uh, Huawei as well. So anyways, guys, if you have any kind of particular questions about it, leave it in the comments below. I will try to answer that. A big thank you to Sahil for actually getting me this unit. I've kind of loaned it out. I mean, loaned it from him. But if you guys don't want to get a loaner and instead want to actually pick up one of these, hey, 28mobile.com has it. I'll leave a link in the description. Do check it out if you haven't yet. And anyways, guys, thanks a lot for your time. Thanks for watching. Uh, thumbs up, thumbs down based on whatever you felt about this video. Subscribe, turn on notifications. Hit that bell icon if you haven't yet. And thanks a lot again uh, for your time. And until next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech. And I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.